Hello, Dr. Mintz here. I'm going to go through here a series of patients with varying manifestations of renal infection, pyelonephritis. So this is an 18-year-old young lady with fever, elevated white blood cell count, and flank pain. Now you may realize that uh, there is an angle in the back near the paraspinal musculature that's called the costovertebral angle. That is the place where if you hit lightly on a patient with pyelonephritis that will elicit a great deal of discomfort. The costovertebral angle, which is basically right here. So doctors will take their fist, they don't hit hard, but they make a fist and they just tap or lightly hit in this area or that. And if there is pyelonephritis, that will elicit localized tenderness in that area. So let's just look through this case here. We'll go right to the kidneys. And the important thing here is is not obstruction. You don't see a mass, don't see a stone. There is a little low attenuation area way up here. But looking at the renal cortex in general, look right here, for example. This is subtle. But you see how this renal cortex here is enhancing nicely and pretty uniform, and you can pretty much follow it all the way around here, then all of a sudden, what's that? Is it volume averaging? I don't think so. Okay, so that's a little diminished. And look here, you know, this is all pretty much uniformly enhancing renal cortex. See that little band right there? I mean, it's not quite enough to make the diagnosis, but it's enough to make you suspicious. And then you look here and say, oh, there's one there. And you think, oh, come on, anybody's going to have something like that. Well, if you start looking at renal cortical enhancement, just about everyone, whether they have cysts or they're old or whatever, if you get, catch them in a good nephrographic phase, you will see pretty uniform renal cortical enhancement. You won't see a little divot like that. Let's go into the, or, or this area right here this area right here, and certainly this should stand out to you now. You see that, how much different that is than the background appearance. Now this looks like it's a cyst, and I'm not sure what that turned out to be, if it's just a cyst with associated pyelonephritis, or could it be a little abscess? Possibly could. Uh, but this is just to give you a little sense of the early, more subtle findings and this is probably as good an example right there of what subtle early findings of pyelonephritis can look like. And you can be a, a huge help to the ER, Dark. Look, look over here, too. Look at the renal cortical enhancement here, and then all of a sudden you see blip, a little defect there. You follow it there. Wait a minute. Why isn't it going out all the way over here? What's this? What's this? And the more you look, the more you tend to start seeing these relatively subtle areas of diminished cortical enhancement. Sometimes there will be a suspicion of renal stone, appendicitis, or whatever it might be, and our ability to see something like this and get on the phone and say, hey, how's the urine analysis? We have some white blood cells in the urine. I think we have a pyelonephritis here. And uh, this is a little suspicious. Could just be a cyst with adjacent pyelonephritis. But the important thing here is pyelonephritis, renal infection. Let's go on to another case. I'm just going to let you look at this one here. Okay, so that should show you pretty well. Look at the renal cortex. Start thinking about what you see. Now this is the CT appearance of what we used to on IVPs call a striated nephrogram. Of course, it has to be a lot more striated than this to show up on a, an IVP. 
but if you look from the top down, look, as soon as you come into that right kidney, you think, oh my goodness, and you might think, well, is it just the phase of the cortical enhancement? Is it just early? No, it's not. that's not how it enhances. Look at here, we have a comparison right there. So this is abnormal, this is abnormal, this is all very abnormal. That's abnormal. This is abnormal, and pyelonephritis often is bilateral. Even this area here looks abnormal. This is decidedly abnormal. Okay? This renal cortical diminished enhancement and this, both of those areas are definitely abnormal. Subtle, they don't grab you and shake you, but this is abnormal. Nice renal cortical enhancement, gone. Now, fibrosis or scarring could look similar, but that will always have a little defect, a cortical indentation. This does not have that. Look at this cortical enhancement, enhancement, enhancement. Something wrong there. Enhances pretty well. Even a little diminished there enhances. Then what is that? There's no good reason for it to look like that. Look down lower here. Abnormal. Abnormal. All this cortical enhancement is abnormal. This is pretty normal. This is all abnormal. Look at how uniform. There's a great deal of, of abnormal en cortical enhancement down here. This is all pyelonephritis. This is all pylo here. This area looks pretty good here, but down here, that's abnormal. That's what pylo looks like. And even if you saw, if you have somebody with the right history, and the only thing you saw was this, I would still write it down probable pyelonephritis. That's how good this finding is. There aren't that many findings that are this specific. This is one of them, though. This is usually a very good uh, sensitive sign of pyelonephritis. Look at this cortical, these little cortical defects there. Pyelonephritis. Let's see how it looks on the coronal series, where you can get more of a more of the kidneys at a glance. Look at this abnormal, abnormal upper pole there. Look at how abnormal the lower pole down here is. Pyelonephritis. All right, now let's go to this case here. Now this is gangbusters. This is unilateral, but look at how pronounced the, the areas of abnormality are. Look at this abnormality here and there. Cortical enhancement abnormalities. Normal and then abnormal there. Normal segment right here, but wide swaths of abnormal enhancement on both sides of it. Pyelonephritis. Pyelonephritis. Could it be an infiltrative neoplasm? Rarely. This is where clinical history makes a big difference large areas of abnormal cortical enhancement. Look at the comparison with the other side. You don't see this. Tumors don't do that usually. Something like a lymphoma potentially could, but that's rare and for it to be patchy like this would not be expected. This is the kind of thing. Look at this. One, two, maybe three here, but these two, this alone, if you were, if it clearly was distinct from the adjacent cortex is enough to call pyelonephritis and it makes a big difference to the doctor to know that of course very often they'll find it out after the urine analysis anyway and you can see this is a young person unfused epiphyses so that's a more flagrant example let's just see what that looks like on coronal because it gives you an example of how coronals can make renal abnormalities stand out because you have more kidney. Nice, nice, normal kidney, abnormal areas. Preservation of cortical thickness with diminished cortical enhancement. Pyelonephritis, no obstruction, no mass, no stones. Now we're going to go to, let's see, this patient here. We're going to go first to the CT.
All right, somehow this patient came first for shortness of breath, chest pain, rule out pulmonary embolism. And thank goodness we picked this, we saw this, and not that it's hard to see. Look at that whopper in the upper pole of the left kidney. What do we have? We have an abnormality in the upper pole of the left kidney. There is a round, low attenuation, probably fluid attenuation structure with surrounding inflammatory changes probably. Here again, you have normal cortical enhancement and you lose it here. And you think of abscess. So you have a fluid pocket with surrounding localized inflammatory changes. Here there's even a suggestion of a second area of fluid collection that is suspicious for an abscess. Adjacent thickening of the pleura in the posterior costophrenic recess. Okay, so this is very suspicious for renal abscess. Let's look at that. Uh, let's see, I think we got some more images through that. Well, that we just happened to catch on a chest CT. This patient, by the way, is recently postpartum. And let's see how the coronals look. That's nice, isn't it? Look at that. You've got nice, normally enhancing renal cortex and this fluid pocket with adjacent inflammation. These people often present with pyelonephritis, and for some reason, they get better with antibiotics, but it just won't quite go away, and this is why they've got an abscess. Okay, now this patient also had MRI and ultrasound. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ultrasound. And the important thing here is we look at that low attenuation, and so much is dependent on the fact that it's fluid. We need to say, are we sure that this is fluid? in that area of abnormality in the kidney. And yes, we have a very, we have anechoic areas within that portion of the upper pole. And then you can see some disturbed echogenicity, slightly increased echogenicity in the adjacent kidney. Okay, not a pretty study, and this is a good example of why ultrasound is very useful. Hard to get in there, probably patient very uncomfortable, can't really get good images of the whole kidney but you can get enough to say, this is not right, and I can see some fluid. I see a fluid pocket indeed in the upper pole. Go to MRI. Look how nicely MRI can depict these abnormalities. Now, we haven't done much body MRI, and I know Chesney has been hoping that we will run into a little bit more of this. Uh, but this is a good example. The kidney overall is a little enlarged, but this is fluid. You can see you always have your controls. What, wait, what kind of sequence is this? Well, let's not worry about that for the moment. Fat is bright and fluid, like urine and water is bright. Okay, so we have bright signal there. You can do diffusion images. Restricted diffusion is something you see in abscesses. I mean, that just tells you exactly what you've got, where you've got it, and you see some edema in the surrounding kidney there. And here's another sequence. And all of these sequences have their various strengths and weaknesses. Look at how much more clearly this demonstrates the renal collecting system. And you can barely make out that abnormality, but you can still see it. Could it be a cystic neoplasm? Might we have met somewhere in the liver, for example, or, in, or adenopathy? Another reason for doing an MRI, look at how beautifully the MRI depicts all of the anatomy. Let's see how this one looks. Okay. Here we go to an axial. Very nice depiction of location, size, extent of this fluid collection. What's this? gallbladder and you know we could go through all of the pulse sequences of MRI but the fact is if you don't see them regularly you're not going to remember most of them they are still to one extent or another T2 weighted or T1 weighted this has bright CSF that's more or less T2 weighted so you expect an abscess probably to be bright 
Sure enough, it is. And you remember that we saw on the CT, hey, wait, we saw this abscess here. Isn't it? It looked like there was an abscess also next to the kidney. And that's what we're seeing here. So it's important. It's not enough to drain this. We need to be aware of this second area of abscess formation. Okay, here's another one, another sequence. Also beautifully, even more clearly demonstrating the two separate collections, which are abscesses. A little different plane, trying to catch it in its own plane, I guess you could say. So coronal plane oriented to the orientation of the kidney, showing really nicely that abscess there. And if we go back where we see the second area, not very well. It's probably in here, and this is why multiplanar imaging is so helpful. Now here you see both of them very clearly. Both areas of abnormal fluid collection in the upper pole, one in the upper pole, and one in the adjacent perirenal space up there. And that explains why you have so much inflammatory change in the costophrenic recess there. Really quite impressive. Very rare. Now we see pyelonephritis. See that regularly? Might see a couple cases a week. And of course, most, most of the cases are picked up clinically so they don't get imaged. So the ones we see are the ones where, which were somehow confusing on the uh, clinical presentation. Here, here's a SADZO reformat showing very nicely these two collections. Look how much clearer these MRIs can be in depicting the anatomy and the location and extent of fluid collections like these. And in this, this case, abscesses. Very helpful. Look how clear this is compared with the CT that we saw earlier, for example, where we had to kind of, well, I think there's something here. This is very, very clear. You can see bowel. Here you can see stomach. Okay. And, and that's it for, for this case. And I'll just take you back to this again just to show you. Yeah, you see it pretty well, but compare this view with what we've seen on the MRI images, especially those sagittals, and you can see how much clearer this is. This is depicted on MRI. But still, you can see that CT is a good workhorse and gets the work done and demonstrates these abnormalities pretty clearly. And I think I've got one more patient here. Let's see what we've got here. I'll give you a chance to look at this. All right, a subtle, relatively subtle area, but this is getting back to the daily bread and butter kind of cases we see. And this is a case that, that I would look at and say, this is pyelonephritis. It looks normal, normal, normal. All this looks normal. Nice renal cortical enhancement, no stones. And then you come into this abnormal. That's a pyelonephritis. That's a pyelonephritis. Okie doke.